today we're going to be talking about the two new commanders coming to rise of kingdoms a brand new face to face with the developers as well as some speculation on the new civilization coming in 2022. what's going on guys cheers so as you guys have seen we have bertrand and alexander nevsky coming to rise of kingdoms now this was posted officially on the rise of kingdoms instagram page you might be thinking omniarch where are the leaks where are the leaks usually we get some leaks before these commanders are unveiled officially and i think right now uh the, those that are famous for leaking the content for rise of kingdoms are a little bit scared lilith has been cracking down lately on copyrighted content that is not officially in the game yet so while i do think that the leakers do know more about the skills and the talent builds of these commanders i don't think that information is really floating around there in the discords that it usually would be however these commanders did start floating around the discords uh about a day or two ago personally i think these are going to be two new cavalry commanders based on their design and also in this image we see more cavalry units than anything we see cavalry unit here cavalry unit here we see some cavalry units in the background obviously there's some infantry and bowmen as well but i i think the most logical conclusion that we can come to right now is that these are cavalry commanders now as far as what i'm predicting for these two new commanders are they going to be rallying commanders are they going to be garrison commanders what's going on with these guys honestly it's really hard to say i think if either of these commanders are really high skill damage uh, especially with aoe I think we're gonna have a a shift in the meta right now zhang yu obviously is dominating with the cavalry rallies still trading super super well against uh, a lot of the popular garrisons right now so if we are able to put somebody behind zhang yu that's more powerful than what we've been using i think we're going to see even more powerful cavalry rallies in 2022 now because of that i actually think that uh, these commanders they may just be open field commanders they may be primed to be good in the open field and not great in a rally scenario again these are my predictions i have no data to back this up okay so we're just talking about my opinions right now then we'll move on to more of the developer face to face and the new civilization coming in 2022 but i think rise of kingdoms right now is in a good meta where you have multiple rally options and you have multiple garrison options and i think the developers realize this and if they intentionally put a new cavalry commander in the game that is extremely powerful for rallies for example now you've shifted that meta away from you know people or commanders like gilgamesh for example it makes the emanatory garrisons less effective because you have a more powerful counter to that garrison so i think right now there's such a delicate balance between the three different troop types that i would really hate to see uh, a commander that comes in that is a secondary to zhang yu that is just absolutely dominant and absurdly powerful uh, i don't know what we're gonna see from these two new commanders um because of that i don't know if we'll see skill damage on them you know again this really all comes down to do the developers care about keeping the balance that the game is in right now if they do care i think that neither of these commanders are going to have insane skill damage that will pair well with zhang yu um they could just be a, a new sort of powerful tanky open field pair right we have the pakal heralds we have lots of commanders that came into the game that were not necessarily the rally meta but still performed decently in the open field i mean you look at a commander like chuk you know that was an exciting addition but it didn't really shake up the meta too much and i'm thinking that if they do care about preserving the balance of the game that's sort of what we're going to see with these commanders however that could not be the case they could be super powerful you slap it behind zhang yu and it dominates or even worse both commanders could be more powerful than zhang yu and we see a whole new cavalry rally meta and then hopefully whatever comes next the next infantry and so on and so forth uh will start a new shift away from zenobia into something else I don't think these are going to be garrison commanders i just don't think we've ever seen a very viable cavalry garrison sure yadviga has some nice trades floating around out there but realistically when you think of how are you going to sacrifice your kingdom's cavalry units it's going to be uh hitting a, a target with a rally so those are my predictions i think that it's more than likely that these commanders will either be insanely overpowered and change the entire meta or they're going to be like the chooks where they're just they're interesting they're powerful in the open field but they don't really change too much i think that's most likely um the the direction that i would hope that developers are taking because i like the balance that the game has right now as for the design i think these commanders are you know 
uh, Lilith is very good at uh, commander design when it comes to a artistic and visual standpoint Bertrand a little bit of a thick boy uh, you know what I'm saying a little little thick there uh his horse is gonna have back problems for sure um Alexander Nevsky I believe the first Russian commander in the game if I'm not mistaken super badass extremely intimidating looking and I just I love the designs overall and they are what we've come to expect from the design team so kudos to those guys moving on to the face to face with the developers so this information uh, I believe came out first for the Vietnamese community and now it's here in English so it says welcome to the face to face with the developers we'll be talking about our development plans for the KVK season and we'll explain our ideas with regards to the latest hot topics so part one postseason development plans balancing the kvk season immigration system this is scary okay the relaxing of rules for the immigration system has generally been well received as the game continues to run the number of immigrants continues to grow having an effect on the original inhabitants of kingdoms in many seasons we're thinking about ways to optimize and adjust the immigration system to allow the robust development of the kvk season we'll let you know as soon as we have more details so this to me sounds like they're trying to figure out a way where players can't really immigrate and impact uh earlier kvks that's my assumption here um obviously players love to immigrate back to kvk2 that is the best thing in rise of kingdoms right now which is very unfortunate for the developers their past work is better than their current work that never feels very good right so with that being the case i think it is ruining the experience for many uh new players who are playing kvk2 for the first time uh and i think here they're trying to figure out a way that they can fix that and unfortunately Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way that they can fix that besides preventing players from immigrating back to KVK2. So we'll have to wait and see how this actually plays out. Um, but further immigration restrictions, I am not a fan of. Uh, personally, I feel like you should be able to go to whatever server you want to, but that's just me. So who knows? Next up, it says improving the crystal system in season of conquest. Since the establishment of the crystal system, we've had plenty of suggestions from governors. What that really means is no one's been happy about it. Um, we're carefully considering ways of optimizing the system. The first step will be increasing the number of ways that you can receive and recycle crystals to improve the overall experience. These changes are still in the planning phase. So that means they're not even testing this yet. They're still trying to figure out what they can do best. Um, this is disappointing. That means that this change is at least six months away, uh, in my opinion, right? I mean, they could surprise us. I don't know if they really are prioritizing this. Maybe we can see it sooner. Uh, it's nice to see that they would like to see more players enjoying the crystal system. Unfortunately, the crystal system is designed from a monetary perspective not from a gameplay perspective that's the problem so they're trying to make it more of a gameplay feature when in reality the crystal system is is simply there to sell bundles that's literally all it's there for right they can claim that it adds depth to the gameplay or whatever the case might be that's not the case it's there to make players temporarily more powerful so realistically um this doesn't mean anything unless it's a big change if this is a minor tweak no one cares and, and like and that's the thing uh, I would I actually wish they wouldn't even mention this because um I would rather them just do it just do it don't even don't tell us what you're doing show us that you actually care because they've been mentioning you know changes to the crystal tech system since it came out right and every change it's not enough it's never enough right and that's because the system is fundamentally flawed so realistically unless we see a major change this doesn't I, I'm not getting excited about this honestly uh, maybe that's just me being pessimistic but from the bottom up the system is is uh parasitic to the gameplay right it actually just takes away from the gameplay and locks it behind uh, a temporary power structure that you have to pay to advance further into right so again you know unless this is a massive change uh, it's not going to make, make any difference and I think that they're afraid to make a massive change because of how much money they make off of this um, and that's why I'm not uh, optimistic because I think at the end of the day they're going to prioritize profits over everything because they're a company so I think what they're going to do is if they do a drastic overhaul of crystal technology it's going to appease the players temporarily and then they're going to implement the naval battles and that's going to be the new thing you have to pay to get good at so they're waiting to implement a system to replace this from a monetary perspective right so the the sad part is that when they do finally fix crystal technology if they ever do it's probably because they have a new money maker that you'll have to focus on that's the sad part anyway creating varied and enjoyable new stories in a number of kingdoms we'll soon be introducing a new season of conquest story desert conquest including a desert map in this new story governors will capture new fortress buildings and become that fortress's manager the general generals can manage the troops of other governors within the fortress 
coming up with strategies attacking and defending against enemies and taking over fortresses and strongholds in the desert which cannot be teleported into governors who aren't able to move their troops in real time can leave them under the command of the general by ordering them to assemble at the fortress allowing them to contribute to their camps forces we hope that this new story will provide governors with a varied and enjoyable gameplay experience that you'll enjoy the design ideas behind it so this sounds like an alteration of march of the ages to me i mean it says that you cannot teleport into the area where there are strongholds and fortresses i i don't obviously we need more information about this this. um but personally i i'm not uh i'm not understanding the direction that they're taking with these kvks i think they've built such a successful foundation and they keep adding like new gimmicks that are just taking away from that right crystal technology just takes away from the core gameplay of of rise of kingdoms like sure you can still open field fight but you have 40 percent less stats than everybody else that's paying for it right so you you lose in this instance you know they're adding a new feature but taking away the ability to teleport which is like nobody wants that right nobody wants that and and i don't understand like when they look at their most successful kvk which is kvk2 they're they, they should be designing a kvk that is taking what's successful about kvk2 and expanding it not taking away features like teleporting and stuff and i get that they you know they're trying to add things that are new and exciting and different and they're experimenting and i appreciate that but at the same time i i think we need a new safe option first that keeps players excited and then you can start to experiment right if what players are most interested in is two-year-old content uh that's a huge problem and you should not be experimenting until you fix that problem right that's my opinion um who knows maybe this co desert conquest uh kvk will be good and exciting i hope it is right i love rise of kingdoms obviously i make content about it i want the game to be good and i want this kvk to succeed but if it's going to continue to be gimmicky and and sort of be similar to march of the ages it's not going to work i can tell you that right now so if that was their plan um i, I don't know what to say but it, it it won't work so anyway part two hot topics would you consider merging kingdoms that have lower populations this has been a big uh topic of conversation for a while now we have tons of servers in rise of kingdoms at this point and many of them are completely dead completely dead 50 active players or less we play close attention to the populations of kingdoms but we have no plans to merge them at this time we're currently looking for a fairer and more systemic way to resolve this problem we've come up with a design for a new kvk registration system rather than being based around kingdoms this new system would be based around alliances giving them the freedom to choose to register for season of conquest stories this way players in kingdoms with low populations could choose to participate in seasons through an alliance this system is being implemented in a select number of kingdoms and we'll be paying close attention to governor's feedback about it so this makes sense um taking the focus away from the kingdom and placing it on the individual alliance could solve this issue the problem with that is you know there are big kingdoms with multiple alliances some of which will want to go into kvk some of which won't and dragothian has already made multiple videos talking about the inherent mega flaw with this problem i hope Lilith has seen that video because he's a hundred percent right he's a hundred thousand percent right there is a massive flaw in this system and that is that if there is an alliance in your kingdom that does register for kvk and the other alliances didn't want to now those alliances can't register for upcoming kvks until the soul alliance that did register is done so yeah this makes sense hopefully they fix that uh one flaw first could you increase verification rewards we've received a, received a lot of feedback from governors about this however we're concerned that increasing verification rewards could make completing verification a new way to participate in events this would defeat the original point of the verification system eliminating idling and providing a genuine gaming environment due to this we currently have no plans to change verification rewards um this i've never considered a problem uh if you play on emulators like you just get like 300 xp like it's it's literally nothing right you get nothing basically for for verifying uh, but the, the point of verification is to just prove you're not a bot so you know you, i mean why would you get rewarded for that i don't know right i, I have no idea um, but this is not a concern to me it's whatever what are the latest developments with the pc version a select number of governors have recently become testing the pc version and they've provided us with a great deal of comments and suggestions there's still a number of issues with the pc version that need to be resolved we hope to make a finished pc version soon this is good obviously i've played on the pc version um to me the reason that it hasn't uh replaced blue stacks which is what you see here um it's because you can't control the resolution of it right it's just the 16 by 9 and you can make it bigger or smaller but you can't you know change it to more of a square resolution which is what i prefer so because of that i don't really use it also uh there's no shop there so if i want to make purchases i'd rather go through the google play store where i can get play points 
um so i actually save money by playing with blue stacks if you guys haven't used blue stacks you can find the link in the description below it's a free emulator that you can use to play rise of kingdoms until they fix the pc version all right so that's it for the face to face with the developers um overall i'm still pessimistic but hopefully it is good let's move on to the final piece that we're going to be talking about here this was a, an official post from the rise of kingdoms facebook page saying a new civilization in 2022 there will be a new civ in rise of kingdoms we have a little competition to talk about take a screenshot of the gift below post the picture of the civilization you got and tell us two things what will be the special bonus and what will be the special unit leave your idea in the comments so essentially what they're doing is there this is a gift that they had from a old rise of kingdoms ad that i actually did feature on this channel if you guys missed my reaction video to the rise of kingdoms ads go ahead and check it out but essentially what happens with this gif is the light the lit up country will change right and so it, uh, at one point portugal's lit up at one point macedonia's lit up at one point greece is lit up and it goes around and what they're saying is to screenshot whichever one you get um and then tell them what it is so what that means is most likely um the next civilization is on this picture right here so that is exciting um I think the highest probability of a new civilization is Persia Greece or Egypt I think with the new KVK being desert based I think Egypt is a huge huge opportunity for them we already see a ton of D Egyptian things in the game we have many of Egyptian commanders already so I think Egypt makes the most sense however I think Persia and Greece are very close runners up now one of the new commanders being Alexander Nevsky does give some credibility to the possibility of Russia being implemented in the game could happen right could happen will it uh I don't think that's enough evidence to suggest that it will I mean this is the first time we're ever seeing a Russian commander right so does that mean we're getting Russia I don't think so but it's interesting to know that they would sort of hint at the new Civ in this way I think that's very unique and very cool all right we went over a ton of stuff in this video I would love to hear your comments down below about these new commanders what you think they're going to be what do you think of the face-to-face -face with the developers and what do you think the new Civ is going to be in Rise of Kingdoms in 2022 I expect these new commanders obviously we have mightiest governor coming up in like six days I don't think they're going to be in that mightiest governor maybe I'm wrong I don't think they will be I think they'll be in the next one so we're still probably a few weeks away from seeing these guys actually in the game and as far as the new civilization I think we'll see this probably in the summertime so I'm assuming June July area so we're still probably six or seven months away from a new civ so a lot of stuff on the horizon for 2022 I'm excited uh and I want to know what you guys are most excited about down below if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace